Hello there and welcome to my guide about water reactors in Dwarf Fortress. In this video I'm going to build with you step by step a way to break the laws of physics and create infinite power. I'm not over exaggerating, it's really working like that and it's quite simple, neat and all it requires is water, a couple of buckets, some water wheels, a screw pump and pretty much that's it. So let's get started with the first few steps. We require a channel and that's going to sit here, that's going to be the spot for the first water wheel, another channel here for the second water wheel, and another channel here for the water source. The screw pump will then be sitting right there, pumping from the southernmost tile up onto the tile of floor right there where my cursor is at right now. You will require a corkscrew and a piece of pipe section, that you can make at the smithy or the carpenter's workshop or at the glassmaker's workshop. There are various sources. Since we're not working with hazardous materials, there's uh, not too much of an issue here. And here we accidentally drilled into our living area, so we have to build up a bit of wall. Don't worry, guys, it's just waterworks here. I, I'm sorry for the oversight, but it doesn't matter. The uh, end result will work just fine. We just have to wall this off, otherwise we will get into trouble. So the next thing we got to do is we got to designate that these places have to be filled with water. But yeah, let's do this. So we require the pit pond zone designator. So what we do now is we're not going to designate this into one giant zone because that would be bad. Instead, we are designating this into lots of small zones, as many as possible. This is because of the way Dwarf Fortress allocates work. The simple gist of it is one job per pond. And that means if we have only one pond, there's going to be only one dwarf working on filling this place with water, and that's not going to work on out. After we have placed these down, we go now onto each one of them and designate it to be a place where water is going to be stored at. Here we go. So once this is all set up, we have now the work orders allocated that we require. Here we have now stopped this from leaking. Everything is nice and dandy. So what will be the next problem though, now though is how to get enough dwarf to do this simultaneously. So here we go. We go into the labor menu. Ideally, my personal ideal solution was setting up a new work detail by clicking this button and setting it up to water hauling exclusively. This this is just water haulers. And then I set up these people here to do the water hauling for me, to put up as many as you see fit in this regard. And now the next important step is I get on over to the haulers and I select literally nobody to do the other hauling. This leads to a behavior where there's going to be only one type of hauling to be done, and that's filling this place with water. Because the beginning of this is really, really important. When you don't have enough workers allocated to this, the water that will be put into the pond will evaporate before the next dude comes with this next bucket of water. You have a certain time frame to fill this again with the next bucket of water, but if you're too slow, this whole thing will come to a halt. So that would be a little bit tragic. So the next thing we can now do, as soon as the water level is somewhere between four and five, we can then build the water wheels left and right. But as you see here, they're already quite busy and it's going to be done in no time. But since we don't want to see here this uh, waiting time, I have prepared a little something here around the corner. So this is how it will look like in the end. We're going to return to this place as soon as it is filled. So we have here the screw pump in the center. It's pumping the water from down here to over here. And this, by a dwarven ingenuity, powers up the water wheels. The fun part is that the screw pump does only require a total amount of power of 10. Each water wheel requires 10 power, and we're producing 200 power. So, 
that's uh, that's the dwarven magic so what i did here though is i confined this a little bit because there's going to be water everywhere so if you don't mind this uh, thing sputtering water left and right you can of course break a section of wall and transport your power away with horizontal axles from here no problem but there will be a little bit of leakage i personally would recommend you to go upstairs and connect that thing upstairs either via a pump stack or a vertical axle and uh, this way the thing about this system is it does it is virtually buildable anywhere all you require is yeah, as you see there there is a limit to the distance between the water and your your hauling but that's literally it so here as soon as there's enough water in here we can slap in these water wheels and then you just select the pump and start it here a couple of little thoughts for the end as you saw there i have built up a hatch here and a lever the basic idea of that is pretty simple we have here a method of stopping the system because as soon as i pull this lever this hatch will slam shut and as soon as there is not enough water anymore in the system it's going to stop after a while this way you can stop the generators from working because i personally don't like any machine that you can stop somehow if you don't have a lever like that you can also stop the machine brute force by deconstructing the screw pump don't deconstruct the water wheels though because that might uh, lead to a lot of leakage what i also want to mention here is you don't need to put up two water wheels you can do this with just one water wheel the system does work fine if you are in confined spaces it does work with just one water wheel you just uh, ignore the second uh, channel there the magic behind it is that the water will balance itself out whatever water is too much in the system will eventually spill out via pressure and evaporate then and what's necessary to keep the system running will be just there so uh, i personally really really like that it's a wonderful situation there okay so uh that's that my friends i have nothing more to say i hope you found that helpful feel free to leave me a comment down below and if you have any ask uh, any questions to ask ask away leave me a thumbs up on that video if you found it helpful and want to make it more visible for other people and of course consider subscribing if you haven't done so already i'd be really really delighted you can also find a playlist to the other dwarf fortress tutorials that i've made in the description box below and a big thanks to all the great and awesome supporters of this channel because you guys make a lot of wonderful things work and last time and Check out the supporter links down there for Patreon, Paypal, and buy me a coffee. I'd be really delighted if you'd give them a look. So, see you guys next time, and have fun with water.